Hello friends, welcome to a new video on Ask Java series. In this video, we are going to answer the most commonly asked Java interview question. That is, what is polymorphism? So let's answer this with a few examples. So in simple terms, meaning of polymorphism is in the word itself. It means poly plus morph. Here, poly means multiple and morph means behavior. So polymorphism simply means multiple behavior. That is, the same thing behaves in multiple ways in different scenarios. Let's take one real-time example. For example, we living beings behave differently in different situations. That is polymorphism itself. For example, let's take a dog. When a dog sees a stranger, he barks. But when the same dog gets food, he'll sniff the food first and then eat the food. So here if you see, depending on the input or depending on what his eyes see, the same dog is going to behave differently. Similarly, in programming, when a particular method behaves differently in different scenarios, we say it is polymorphism. And we'll take an example to understand this. But before that, understand there are two types of polymorphism. One is compile time and other is runtime. So first we'll see compile time polymorphism after which we'll see the runtime polymorphism. So as I said, the same method is going to behave differently. How? Let's see. So we have a project here inside which we have a main class and main method. Now we're going to take one more class here called as calculator. And let's say this calculator is just performing addition on numbers. So we'll have one method which returns a type int because it is going to add two integer numbers and let's call this method add and it takes int a and int b that is the integer numbers as input and it is going to return the addition of a and b. Simple right? This is a simple add method. Now let's call this add method. So we are going to create object of calculator here. Let's say calc equal to new calculator. And let's say calc dot add and we'll pass two numbers three and four. Here let's also add addition is let's say a plus b. Okay, and let's just print it and return the value. So addition is a plus b. If I run this, here we have output as addition is 7. Okay, we got this output. Now what if I want to add two double numbers? In that case, I'm going to say 3.2 and let's say 4.5. I want to add these two numbers. But the calculator add method won't accept these numbers. Why? Because it takes integer. So what we have to do is create one more method that is going to take double values. So this is the same method add again. And for user to understand what it does, we keep the method name same, but the arguments change. So here, as you can see, we have same method with different inputs and it is going to behave differently for different inputs. So here we'll say addition of integers is and same we'll do in the double method you can have diff completely different logic here if you want and addition of double numbers is and since we have d and e let's say d and e so here and we are going to return double from here. If I pass double now, addition of double numbers, this is going to be called. And if I pass simple int, then the first method is going to be called. So in this way, at compile time, the compiler determines which method to call depending upon this input integers. So if we pass double, it will call this method. If we pass 
integers it will call this method and this compiler is able to identify at the compile time and hence this is known as compile time polymorphism now what if you want to pass three arguments you can still do that with another method so if i say four five three four and eight then again it will ask me to correct this error by creating a method with three integers and this again is example of polymorphism because it is the same method with different inputs again here you can have your logic and that method is going to be called so this is compile time polymorphism i hope you understood this concept properly now let's see what is runtime polymorphism so let's create one more class here to understand the example of runtime and i'll say runtime polymorphism so here remember runtime polymorphism comes into picture in the concept of inheritance so there is a parent class and there is a child class when a child class extends parent class it is going to get properties of parent class and in that case we can execute runtime polymorphism let's see how so suppose we have class animal like this in this we'll take a method let's say eat so public void eat and in this i print animal eats simply like this then let's say we have a class called as dog which is going to extend animal because we want to implement inheritance here it should be extend now this dog can access the behavior eat of animal but what if you want to change the behavior of eat in the dog class so you can do that even if dog can have the access to eat method of animal you can change the behavior of eat if you want and that you can do like this so let's say public void eat and we'll say dog eats bones like this right so this is the same eat method but behaves differently for dog and this way we can achieve polymorphism because it is same eat method behaving differently and this eat is overriding this eat method and that is why it is also known as method overriding so now let's call our eat method now let's call this eat method we'll have a main function here first and let's say animal a equal to new animal and let's say a dot eat let's see what happens here we have output as animal eats which is from this method now if i create object of dog instead of animal and if we run this it is going to call the dog method eat and it has displayed dog eats bones so depending upon the object that is created compiler determines which method to call but this is done at run time compiler at compile time does not know which method to call it is run it is done when the object is created hence this is known as run time polymorphism so i hope you understood both compile time and runtime polymorphism let's just revise this once to understand the difference between the both we'll also have a separate question which is going to tell us the difference between compile time and runtime polymorphism covered again so as you know polymorphism is concept of behaving differently in different situations and there are two types of polymorphism compile time and runtime in compile time we have same method executing different behaviors but remember in this method or in this polymorphism the arguments should always vary only when the arguments are going to vary that is if the type or the number of arguments are different for the same method we say it exhibits compile time inheritance so 
having different argument is compulsory here. And since we are overloading this methods with different arguments, it is also known as method overloading. And the other part here is runtime polymorphism. So we achieve runtime polymorphism with inheritance. So there is a parent class and there is a child class. And if child class wants to alter or wants to modify the method of parent class, it overrides that method like this. And that concept is called as runtime polymorphism because depending on the object, compiler finds out which method to call. In this, remember the arguments are not in the question. The method signature should be same. So in compile time polymorphism, the signature was different. That is different parameters. But in runtime polymorphism, the signature should be same. Only the method implementation varies. So this was about compile time and runtime polymorphism, guys. So if you have any questions on Java or polymorphism, please mention them in the comment section below and we'll get back to it very shortly. Until then, don't forget to subscribe and like and share this video. Thank you.